Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Troy Mayers and I am pumped. Pumped to have you here. Today's video is a bit of a hybrid between what's in my camera bag along with five tips that you can use to better pack and organize your camera bag. Let's get after it. Step number one is gonna to be to lay it all out. You need to take all of your equipment and put it on the ground on the table in front of you and we'll begin to take inventory of the things that we want to have with us when we go out to shoot our next project. This means everything, the camera bodies, the lenses, the mics, the batteries, that lens cloth that you have like shoved in that side pocket that you never actually use, but it, it always is there. It's been there for years. Get it all out, put it on the table, on the floor if you have to, and lay it out flat lay style so that way you can take a visual inventory of everything that you want to take with you on your next project, okay? Then uh, snap a top-down pic for your Instagram, hashtag like and follow the whole deal. Once you get it posted, come back, cut it down. I assure you, and Troy, I'm talking to you, I assure you that you're taking things with you that you don't need to be taking. So there's a certain amount of camera gear that's gonna be essential for capturing a banger visual, right? And then everything else after that begins to have a real diminishing return when it comes to the actual final deliverable, that final image that ends up on screen, okay? There's a couple points I wanted to make about bringing extra gear. A, it's gonna take up space in the bag and it's gonna make the bag heavier. Nobody wants to be lugging around excess weight. Ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. That was a quote from our old army days when we would go on 12, 13 mile, 24 mile ruck marches, right? All of those little bits and pieces add up to pounds and the more pounds that you're carrying with you, the more pain that you're in. Don't be bringing extra stuff, if nothing else, to not have extra weight. But the other point I wanted to make about that extra gear you're bringing with you, it's taking up mental real estate, right? When we go out to shoot, there's already a thousand things that we're thinking about when it comes to capturing that image, right? Let's do ourselves a favor and take a couple of those decisions off the plate simply by not bringing them, freeing up that mental real estate to think about the things that are actually important for capturing that banger visual, right? Things like our composition, our, our, our lens choices, our exposure, double checking our audio level. That's gonna leave us with just a few essential categories of items. Our camera bodies, our lenses, our batteries, media cards, and some microphones. Adapt and overcome. The last part of this step is to take all those dividers out of the bag as well. We're giving ourselves a fresh start. I, I know if you're anything like me, you've spent a fair amount of time putting those in there the first time and you don't really want to take them out because it kind of works for you. But chances are you clicked on this video because you're not super stoked about the way that your bag is set up now. So let's give ourselves that clean start. Rip out those dividers as well. My journey in transporting camera equipment has been eclectic at best. I, I've tried just about everything out there from bags to soft-sided cases, hard-sided cases, carts, the works. And I finally landed that plane with the Atlas Athlete Backpack. I had a chance to have coffee with Alan, the owner of Atlas Packs, uh, recently. He's a great dude with an even better mission. He, he's a very adventurous guy and he couldn't find the right bag for him, so he made it. With this being a very adventurous bag, it's, it's not gonna be ripping, tearing. It's very weather resistant, nothing's gonna fray. More importantly though, it's got a great support system. Step number two is gonna be to keep your bag carry-on compliant. Keep it carry-on friendly, even if you're not traveling all that often for work. It's gonna have some other benefits for you we'll talk about in a minute, but when you do find yourself traveling, this allows you to take your bag with you to your seat, okay? You never wanna be separated from your mission critical equipment, your cameras, your lenses, your batteries, and media cards. Those things that we already have in the bag, keep those with you on the plane. I was traveling a lot for a commercial this, this previous summer, 2022, and I was using a Pelican Air 1535 at the time. The carry-on compliant hard side case, I, I roll down the jetway and I get to my plane, which happens to be a very small plane, right? And, and that large case wasn't gonna fit in the overhead bin. I did all that I could to not have them take it for me and check it, but there was no other option. So I then proceeded to take the most uncomfortable and stressful flight knowing that my camera gear was floating around in the bottom of the plane somewhere. Uh, I just knew when I'd get off, I'd have a broken lens or, or a busted camera. Fortunately, none of my stuff did end up breaking. The Pelican case took a beating, but the stuff inside was okay. But my goodness, learn from that mistake. Keep your stuff in a bag that you can have with you at your seat. Bonus points if it can fit under the seat in front of you. 
The other thing that a carry-on compliant bag is gonna do, it's gonna make you rethink the things that you bring with you. So go back to our flat lay. You might have to get rid of a couple of those things that were on the fence that were not the essentials to get them to fit in your carry-on bag. And if you're not traveling every week, every month for video or photography work, this is still gonna be helpful in getting in and out of your car, going up and down flights of stairs as you walk the city block. It's gonna keep you more mobile, it's gonna make you less of a target, and it's gonna make you more efficient. We're left with our essential gear and the shell of a backpack. So now it's time to put that gear into the bag and that leads us into step three, which is going to be to maintain easy and efficient access to your gear. I want you to keep in mind the thing that you're gonna need access to first once you get onto your location or your site that you're gonna shoot your project, okay? The first pieces of equipment we put into the bag are gonna be the last things that we take out of that bag. So for me, that means that my, my extra batteries, my extra media cards are gonna go in first because I won't need those first thing. And the last thing that's gonna go in is going to be my camera body. There are a couple of valid schools of thought as to how you go ahead and pack your gear into your bag. Me personally, I like to have my camera as close to ready to shoot out of the bag as I can get it. This means my lens is on, my battery is in, my media card is in and formatted. I'll even go as far as the day before the shoot. I'll try to dial in my camera settings as close to what I think they'll need to be for that first shot. This way I can spend less time doing and building up my camera rig and I can spend more time thinking about the things that actually matter for creating that video on the day. Things like exposure or my composition or more importantly than that even, the story that we're trying to tell or the emotional journey we're trying to take our viewer on. Now we know what we're trying to accomplish with our bag layout, that'll take us to step four. And the idea behind step four is that there's a place for everything and everything has a place. This will do a couple things for us. First, it's gonna better protect our gear. Everything has its own home to live in. None of our equipment is gonna be jostling around it and bumping into each other. Camera equipment, it's hard, it's brittle. Glass, metal, what have you. We don't want those things hitting into each other as we shoulder our bag and, and walk around the city or we, we toss it in the back of our vehicle. If we hike up a mountain, we're gonna be moving around a lot and our equipment inside will be as well. So everything should have its own little padded home that it can go back into to isolate it from the other equipment and keep it from hitting each other. The other thing this does for us is it provides a visual checklist of all of our essential equipment, right? We have pared down to just the essentials. Congratulations on doing that. That's not a fun or easy task to do. I love camera gear as much as the next person, probably more. So it's hard to, to not bring some of it with us, right? But when we go to open up our bag before we leave for a shoot, we can visually assess to see if there's any holes in our system. And that'll tell us right away that we're missing a piece of gear. This helps to keep us from forgetting essential pieces of equipment that we need to do our job because there are a lot of them and it'd be easy to overlook something. So this gives us one little checklist before we leave and it does double duty when we're packing up at the end of the day, at the end of our shoot. Again, before you zip that bag and head home, visually check your bag, make sure there's no holes. Make sure you didn't leave a lens somewhere or forget to take a mic pack off of your talent. The last step that I have for you, the last tip, number five, is gonna to be to try to put the heavier items towards the bottom of the bag. All right, this was a tip I learned back from my army days, packing a rucksack for, for a 20 mile day. You want the heavier items on the bottom because that's gonna shift the weight from your shoulders more towards your hips and your body's designed to carry weight around our hips better than solely on our shoulders. It'll help keep you from, from wearing out and you can take your gear farther or you can get to your final destination without being quite as exhausted. Okay, that's why I like the Atlas pack as much as I do. It's got a waist, a waist belt as well as a nice support system around the shoulders. But as important as that is, the way that you pack your bag is going to be just as important in how it wears on your body. All right, I've been talking for a while and this conversation is getting a little one-sided. So let's move the conversation down to the comments below. Ask me any questions you might have or share any tips that I didn't mention today because I love packing camera bags and I would love to have that conversation with you. On your way down to the comments, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and I will very much look forward to seeing you in the next video.